Sunday. Some of you have palm branches. And we're going to bring those forward on a particular verse. And I'm going to let you know what that verse is. So when you hear us sing Hosanna to the King of Kings, Hosanna to the Lamb, all right? You may be scattered throughout the sanctuary, but when you hear that verse being sung, and it's the last one, okay? Hosanna to the King of Kings, Hosanna to the Lamb, you may come forward and you just lay those palm branches here in front of the offering table. And we're actually going to sing that chorus two times, all right? So don't uh, step on anyone. Don't make a mad rush. There'll be plenty of time because Brandon and Preston will continue to play until your job is done. This is Palm Sunday. What Sunday is this Sunday? Palm Sunday. Sister Paige, did, did you get your purse from Sunday School? Excellent. We saw that from Sunday School. I'm going to make sure you got it. We're a lovely bunch, but we're not always trustworthy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm kidding. I am kidding. Stand with me. We will glorify together. I can feel the stress of my daughter at the piano. Here we go. Sing with me. come and you lead us in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you today. Lord, we give all of our praise to you. Lord, we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your son who came and lived and died in order that we might have eternal life. Father, just bless this service today as only you can. Of course, in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Even though I feel like this is kind of a stand-up song, you, you keep your seats. 
take your seats. I'm going to catch my breath for just a moment. I was wondering if you were going to sing with me, but that's okay. You're going to sing later, and that's what we asked for. The Wonderful Cross. Sing with us. This is an old song sort of medleyed with the new chorus. We've done it several times before. Let's do it again. Here we go.
But when Nelda was probably about seven and a half months pregnant with Trip, how pregnant are you, Randa? About seven and a half months? Six weeks left. I can't do math in my head. What did I tell you, Brother Tim, when you were talking to Brother Tim? He's the math guy, not me. But Nelda was singing at Southside. I see you looking at your clock. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So Nelda was singing. She was singing the brush. And she was very pregnant with Trip, who's back in the sound booth. And she couldn't get her breath. And she just stopped and had to go sit. And um, and that was it. And so a few weeks later, Trip was born. Anybody, any, any lady in here? Because, you know, that's the only people that can have babies are women. Can I get an amen? amen? Any pregnant ladies understand what that's like being that pregnant before? So Randy's going to sing, and I probably hexed her and vexed her now. I have not. She's going to sing a beautiful song. We're going to keep singing now. I've shared my personal story about my family. So, Nelda asked me last night, she said, this song, are you sure this is it? Because I, I don't think anybody's going to know this song. This is it. I was drawn, I told my children, I was drawn to this song that's really written for this time of the year, right before Easter. This is it, right before Easter next week. So, it's good. Don't miss the words. Words are important. Do you hear me? Words are important. 253 in your handles. Sing with me from the screens if you wish to do that. We're going to do all four verses. Watch my direction. It will be important as we end each verse. I saw the cross of Jesus when burdened with my sin. I saw the cross of Jesus to give me peace with
story is next. Two verses, we'll sing them both. sweet word of testimony and um, there are a thousand different reasons to be grateful and thankful for this to be my home church but yesterday I was reminded yet again that I'm happy that I'm here and this is my home church um, such love in a thousand points of light if I may steal a metaphor um, Brother Mike mentioned that in Sunday school. Um, but, uh, Brother Mike, thank you for the, the job you do for God. Thank you so much. Um, I've said it so many times, but you bless my heart, man. You bless my heart so much. I just wanted to say that. Uh, I love him so much. Do you agree with that? Amen. Amen. 
for the Lord. And we, get, we just get to be a part of that. Pray for Randa uh, as she sings this beautiful song. Uh, and, and we get to, to be a part of that too. Pray for Brother Mike as he stands before us with the word.
you so much, Randa. How thankful we are for our worship team. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, I want to invite you to turn with me, if you will, to the New Testament, to the Gospel according to John. John chapter 12, and we'll begin reading with verse 12. John chapter 12, beginning with verse 12, and I want to share a message with you this morning entitled, The Significance of the Palm Branch. John 12, beginning with verse 12, stand with me now in reverence to God's Word. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna. Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon. As it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's coat. And these things understood not his disciples at the first. But when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. The people, therefore, that was with him when he called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him up from the dead, bear record. For this cause the people also met him, for that they had heard that he had done this miracle. But the Pharisees, therefore, said among themselves, Perceive ye how you prevail nothing. Behold, the world is gone after him. You may be seated. And I pray that the Lord would teach us. Father, we thank you. Lord, for this day, for this opportunity to be together. Lord, I pray that you would bless this time in your word. Lord, just speak through me the words you would have us to hear today. Lord, we give you this time. Holy Spirit, you take over. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, let me begin by saying this is a very special day in the life of the church because it is the beginning of of what we know as Passion Week. The last week of Jesus' life leading up to the cross. And of course that word passion uh, that, is that we use means suffering. And that is why Mel Gibson in his movie that he did in 2004 called it the Passion of the Christ because of all the suffering Jesus went through. But the week itself kicked off on what we call Palm Sunday. And let me just say, that wasn't a day of suffering. That was a day of celebration. A day unlike any other. You see, it was Passover week. And historians tell us that there were as many as two and a half million people who had gathered in Jerusalem to celebrate this great feast. And this was the day Jesus chose to make his triumphal entry into the city. Look at verse 12. The word says, and the next day. On the next day. The next day after what? Well, if you read the first 11 verses, you find that Jesus was in uh, Bethany at the home of his friends, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. They were enjoying a dinner together. And afterward, the Bible says that Mary... Uh, anointed his feet with some very precious ointment of spikenard. And, and it was then that Judas Iscariot said, why was this waste made? It could have been sold for 300 pence and given to feed the poor. And yet Jesus said, leave her alone. She has done this because of my burial. And so on the next day, after all this had transpired, the word said that much people that were come to the feast, when they heard Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him. And that's what uh, we did this morning at the beginning of the service as you marched forward into the sanctuary carrying these branches and laid them before the altar. But have you ever stop to wonder what is the significance of the palm branch. What was it significant on the day that Jesus came into Jerusalem? What is its significance for us today? Well, this is what I want us to look at in our time remaining. And so as we go through these verses, 
together this morning. There are three things that I want to call your attention to, literally three lessons that we learn from the palm branch. And what are they? Well, lesson number one is that the palm branches signify rejoicing and celebration. They signify rejoicing and celebration. You see, it had always been the custom of the people of the ancient East that whenever a king would come back from battle triumphant, the people would line the way and they would wave palm branches signifying victory. And they did this as a way of praising him. And that's what they were doing that Sunday that Jesus came riding into town. Now look again at verse 4 uh, of our scripture. The word says, verse 13, the word says that when Jesus, when he had found this young donkey, he sat there on it, it's written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, for behold, thy king cometh sitting on the foal, a donkey. And you need to understand, this was a prophecy an Old Testament prophecy from the book of Zechariah that said, Rejoice greatly, you daughter of Zion. Behold, the king cometh to you. And that word rejoice greatly that he uses there means to exalt loudly. And so when Jesus came by, they were waving palm branches and they were shouting. They were rejoicing loudly. Now, these Jews were familiar with palm branches simply because there were palm trees, date palms, all over the land of Israel, and they would eat the dates from the trees, but they would use the branches as well because every year they were commanded to observe the Feast of Booths, celebrating the fact that God had delivered them out of Egypt and led them into the land of of Canaan, and so they'd make a temporary shelter, and they would make a roof of it of palm branches, and they would live in that shelter for a whole week, and as they would remember what God had done for them so many years ago, they would rejoice. But why was this such a time of rejoicing when Jesus entered into Jerusalem? Well, the answer is because they saw this as the long-awaited presentation of the Messiah. Again, in verse 13, the word says, they took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And when they called Jesus the king of Israel, what they were saying was that he was the Messiah, the one they had longed for and waited for for centuries. And the thing about it is Jesus accepted their praise. Now, you remember in the Gospels, whenever Jesus would perform a miracle, many times he would say, don't, don't tell the people. At the feast, at the wedding feast in Cana of Galilee, when the host ran out of wine, his mother, Mary, went up to him and said, Son, they've no wine. And he said, What have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. But as he made his way into Jerusalem that day, his hour to present himself as their Messiah had come. And the Bible says there was so much rejoicing that the religious rulers were upset. And, and they said to, to him, uh, rebuke your disciples. Don't you hear what they're saying? They're calling you the Messiah. And Jesus said, if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. And what he was saying was, they're right. I am the Messiah. My hour has finally come, and the people do good to rejoice. And so that's what the palm branch signified in their day. Now, today, it is a reminder to us that we are to rejoice in the Lord. As Paul said in Philippians 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, but we're not always doing that, are we? Billy Sunday, the great evangelist, used to say many of us need to take the groans out of our prayers and push some hallelujahs into them. <laughs> I agree with that. You know, when we were pastoring in Coldfield, Brother Rick Rogers and his family were members there. 
he would always sit in the choir loft and uh, while I was preaching, if if he liked something I said, he would say, Yeah, glory to God. Scare about half the congregation. You know, Baptists aren't used to that kind of stuff. But I'm gonna tell you what, I I I I I think that it would do a lot of good for us to loosen up some. And to do as these folks did, to lift our hands, not be afraid or ashamed, and shout and give praise to God. And so that's the first lesson from the palm branches. They, they signify rejoicing and celebration. But the second thing is the palm branches signify deliverance and salvation. Deliverance and salvation in verse 13. Uh, the word says they took the branches of the palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried Hosanna. And his brother Randall shared earlier, that was a that is a messianic term. And it means save now. And so what they were saying as Jesus came riding into Jerusalem was, Lord, come and save us. That's why they were praising him. And what were they praising him for? For salvation and deliverance. Again, the Feast of Booths, they were celebrating the fact that God had delivered them from the bondage of Egypt and had led them into the land of promise. He had given them salvation. And so that's what Messiah was to do. He was to deliver and he was to save. Now let me show you something interesting. I don't know if you've ever uh, considered this or not, but we're going through the book of Revelation on Wednesday night. And the apostle John uh, said in chapter 4, uh, he said, a door was opened in heaven and the Lord said unto him, come up here and I'll show you things that which, which must be hereafter. And in chapter 7, he says this, after this I beheld and go a great multitude which no man could number of all nations, kindreds and peoples and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hand, saying salvation to our God, which sat upon the throne and unto the Lamb. Yeah. And so you know what we're doing today with these palm branches? We're, we're practicing uh, our trip to heaven. Uh, because, yeah, amen. Because uh, the Bible says when we get there, we're going part of our worship is we're going to be waving palm branches and we're going to be rejoicing over the salvation that Jesus Christ gave us through the cross of Calvary. And so that's what these people were praising him for that Palm Sunday. They knew that the Messiah would be a deliverer. They knew that he would be a savior for the people. And, and, and even though they, they misunderstood all that would come about, they knew that that's what Messiah would do. You see, Jesus had proved himself over three and a half years of ministry that he truly was the Messiah. And so, uh, look at what the word says in verse 17. The people, therefore, that was with him, when he called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him from the dead, they bear record. In other words, they, they uh, give testimony to the fact that that Jesus had performed this miracle and they said, you are the Messiah. And so he had proved himself. The prophets had all said Messiah would deliver Israel. And so that's what they were waiting for him to do. They were waiting for him to deliver them. Deliver them how? Well, at the time, they were under the occupation of Rome. And so they thought that uh, in terms of political deliverance, See, they didn't understand Jesus had two comings. His first coming was to die and give his life a ransom for many. When he comes the second time, it will be to rule and to reign. And so they, they didn't understand the truth that deliverance required death. They didn't see that, even though he told them. Look at verse 24. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, the word is truly, truly, in other words, he was saying, pay attention, this is important. Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. 
But he said, if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. What Jesus was saying was that he was that grain of wheat, that he had to die and be buried in the earth in order to bring salvation and bear fruit. If he didn't go to the cross, he said there would be no hope for sinful man. But they didn't understand <clears throat> that deliverance and salvation required death. But these palm trees that you see before this altar this morning, there are to remind us that our salvation is in Jesus and in Him alone and it took His death and resurrection in order to secure it. Amen. <clears throat> so that's the second lesson we learned from the palm branches. They signify deliverance and salvation. And then lesson number three, they signify honor and surrender. Honor and surrender. Matthew's gospel says that a great multitude cast their garments in the way and cut branches and strode them in the way. And why would they do that? As a means of honoring their coming Messiah. But even though you know, they, they still didn't understand. The majority of the people that day did not understand what was to happen. And the reason, listen, the reason they didn't understand is because they weren't true followers of the Lord. They were merely fans of Jesus. You know, you read in the book of Acts chapter 1, the true followers of the Lord numbered only a hundred and twenty people. Can you imagine that? Ministering three and a half years, Jesus had only a hundred and twenty true followers. Now, he had a ton that day on the road to Jerusalem. And they were shouting, Hosanna. They were, they were throwing their garments and branches down. But understand this, that same crowd that next Friday Rather than saying, hail him, we're saying, nail him. They were saying, crucify him. Now, how could that happen? Because they wanted the Messiah to do what they wanted him to do. They wanted him to overthrow Rome. And when they saw that that wasn't going to happen, then they turned against him. See, they missed it. They weren't followers. They were fans. And a lot of church folks today are like that. You think about it. They're big fans of Jesus as long as everything's going good in their life. But let something bad happen and he doesn't perform the way they think that he should just like this crowd. They turn against him. In Revelation chapter 4 though, that which we looked at this past Wednesday, when the saints of the ages and all of creation were bowing down before the Lord. The Bible says they fell before him and cast their crowns at his throne. And they said, thou art worthy to receive glory and honor and power. That's a true follower of Jesus. That's a true follower. Of the Lord. That's what we should be doing as God's people every single day of our life. Giving to the Lord the honor that He deserves. But you see, to do that, you have to give Him all of your life. You know, we sing that invitation hymn, I surrender all. It would be more appropriate, I think, a lot of times to sing, I surrender some. Because most people today just are not willing to give everything about their life to the Lord. But you see, to truly trust Him, that is exactly what it means. Now, let me ask you, in closing this morning, where do you stand with Jesus? Are you a true follower of the Lord, or would you have to admit you're just a fan? After what? The Lord Jesus Christ went through the suffering, the death on the cross. So many people today want to claim to follow him, but when it comes to coming forward and confessing him, they're not willing to do that. 
after all he's done, we should be willing to do whatever God calls us to do. And that's what these palm branches laid before the altar mean. It means that we surrender our lives to him because he's worthy. He's worthy of all of our honor, praise, and glory. You bow with me. Our Father in heaven, we thank you. Lord, for this day that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for this service. Lord, we thank you that every time we come together, we can sing praises to your name. We can give you the honor and glory that you're so deserving of. The Holy Spirit just move in our midst today. Lord, you convict us where conviction is needed, convince us where that's needed. And Lord, if you would draw anyone to yourself this morning, let them come. We'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to stand with me. And I did not know this in our invitation hymn with I Surrender All. If you can sing that this morning. And the Lord would lead you to make a decision. Would you come? Don't put things off any longer. If God would lead you to come this morning, you come. As we sing. Anyone at all, will you come? If God would lead you to come, you come. Thank you so much for being here.